Boker Tov, everybody, and Chag Sameach. I want to thank Rabbi Gordon and all of the Temple Israel clergy for inviting me to participate in today's service. Um, I heard about this last year, and then I reached out to Rabbi Gordon. I said, is it happening again? And I am so happy to be here. I am just beyond impressed and blown away with what everybody was able to do today. So I'm really happy to see all of my Hillel students and their families, and it gives me great pleasure to share in the joy of Sukkot with all of you this morning. So like many of you, I imagine, like many of you, Sukkot is one of my favorite holidays. Truthfully, I dread the thought of pulling out the supplies to put together my Sukkot at home, but once I start, I find immense joy in building it hanging up the decorations, and inviting guests to share meals. Now, I find it interesting that none of the major pilgrimage festivals, which we call the Shalosh Regalim, Sukkot, Pesach, or Shavuot, none of them is as rich in commandments or mitzvot as Sukkot. So Sukkot's mitzvot include the obligation to build a sukkah and to dwell and have meals in it, taking hold of the lulav and etrog, which we will do in Kiddush, at Kiddush, some, some, in the Sukkah, the taking of the arava, the willows, on Hoshana Rabbah, which is a custom that dates from the time of the prophets, and some of our older students, Joan, I'm looking at you, Jilly, I'm looking at you, you're going to have the opportunity to um, take hold of those, uh, of the willows on Friday. And lastly, the specific commandment to rejoice and you shall rejoice in your festival, comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 16, verse 14. And among these mitzvot, I think that some might seem to conflict, but after thinking about them, they very much align with our way of life as Jews. So after emerging from the Aseret Yimei Tshuva, the 10 days of repentance between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, during which we ask forgiveness from each other and from God and pray to be sealed in the book of life for the coming year, we are on one hand commanded to eat and dwell in a sukkah. Now, let's talk about the sukkah. It's a flimsy structure, open to the heavens, vulnerable to the wind, the sun, and the rain. It's often cold and dank. Now, right now, or last night, if you were in a sukkah, it was pretty warm. But if you looked at the weather forecast, it's going to get chilly later on this week. So Sukkot, Sukkot recalls one of the more negative elements of the 40 years in the desert in which the Israelites lived without permanent homes. They were in the wilderness in no man's land where it was hard to know what to expect and what dangers lie in wait along the way. The Israelites certainly lived under the protection of God, but they could never be, ensure, and they could never be sure in advance what would be forthcoming and what form of protection that might take. It was a prolonged period of immense secure insecurity. So on one hand, we are commanded to eat and dwell in a sukkah. Yet at the same time, we are commanded to celebrate with unbridled joy. Sukkot, as we heard earlier, is referred to as man simchatenu, our time to rejoice. So Sukkot exemplifies insecurity, and by sitting in a sukkah, nonetheless, we are acknowledging that life by, by its nature is a risky and fleeting endeavor. And yet, we can face it without fear when we know we are not alone. It is in this context that we come to understand rejoicing. Now, one of my teachers, Rabbi Lord Jonathan Sachs, Zichrono Livracha, blessed memory, was the former chief rabbi of the United Kingdom. And I often turn to Rabbi Sachs when I need inspiration. Rabbi Sachs said, Sukkot engenders the most profound question of what makes a life worth living. Having prayed on Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur to be written in the book of life, the Sefer Kohelet, the book of Ecclesiastes, which some synagogues read on Sukkot, forces us to remember how brief life actually is and how vulnerable. Sukkot teaches us, limnot yamenu ken hoda levav chachma. Teach us to number our days 
that we may get a heart of wisdom. So Sukkot should remind us, all of us, that each day is a blessing and that it is a privilege to be alive and that the gift of life is itself a reason to feel joy. I feel that joy every day when I say morning announcements and I begin with Boker Tov, Hillel. I feel it when we are celebrating the B'nai Mitzvah of our seventh and eighth graders. And I feel it wholeheartedly today as we celebrate Sukkot together and the partnership between Frankel Jewish Academy, Hillel Day School, and Temple Israel. These are simple moments of joy that I relish more now than at any other time in my career. So like the holiday of Sukkot shows us, my hope, my blessing, my bracha for all of us is that we continue to find ways to infuse joy in those moments of uncertainty that might seem scary, knowing that God is with us along the way. Chag Sameach.